Today's video is sponsored by Procrastination. Procrastination. Don't worry, we got plenty of time. It is said that work expands to fill the time available for its completion. Therefore, it is truly remarkable how much faster things advance once the deadline approaches. And so I find myself once again in a situation where I need to rush to get a boat ready to go into the water and leave out everything non-essential. But in my defense, I am a careless risk taker who only seems to learn his lessons the hard way. So let's not waste any more time and get right to it. Let's start by working some more on the monster transom I'm building for two outboard motors. I got four short pieces of 100x100H beams and the plan is to make two height adjustable transoms where the outboard motors will be attached to. To achieve this I'm gonna have to drill some holes into all of these H beams in order to bolt them together. I got myself a so-called magnetic cord drill which has an electromagnetic element at the bottom that can be turned on and off and allows to drill relatively large holes in a very precise and fast manner. I'm going to attempt to place the holes with such precision that the bottom hole can fit into the top hole and thus make the entire structure height adjustable. For this, I'm making a template out of this steel flat profile in the hopes that I can transfer the position of the holes with maximum precision onto the H-beams. Here, I'm marking the position of the holes with a little drill onto the H-beam. In between, I'm double-checking if the holes are at equal distance from the border of the H-beam. Here you can see why the core drill has its name, because in its center it actually has a hole where a guiding pin can fit through and where the cooling fluid is being fed to the tip of the drill. In my first tries, I don't really trust that the cooling fluid really gets to the tip of the drill, so I'm adding some manually. I periodically remove the metal shavings, so they don't interfere with the cutting process. To give you an idea how fast this core drill works, let's watch the same cut with a timestamp. Forty-nine seconds for over ten millimeters of steel. In my mind, just unbelievable. And look how clean this cut is. So if I manage to position the machine properly for each hole, I could actually pull this off. With my first piece being a complete success, all I have to do now is transfer the position of these holes exactly onto the H-beams that are welded onto the boat. So I'm gonna spray some paint into the holes, hoping that I'm gonna get a precise print onto the other H-beam. All I have to do now is to position the machine exactly at the center of that circle created by the spray paint inside the drill hole. Repeat the process for all the four holes and then it should fit precisely. By now I'm using a syringe to apply the cutting oil as I'm still not really trusting the machine or rather I don't want to risk overheating the drill bit especially in this horizontal position. A quick test to see if the holes are still aligned. And believe it or not, they are, so I can continue drilling. Now that all the holes are drilled, if my plan worked, I should be able to fit all the four bolts through both of the H-beams without any issue. And see there, it actually worked. I can now apply this proven method to the remaining H-beams. Once again first by drilling the holes into the shorter H-beam. 
then making a print onto the H-beam that's attached to the boat. Then drilling the holes in this horizontal position. Now that the two shorter H-beams are in place, I will add a plate between the two, which will act as the actual transom. For this, I'm gonna cut two plates out of 5mm sheet steel, which I'm gonna use for a single transom, and the reasons for using two 5mm plates rather than a single 10mm plate are that for one, I do have this material available right now, so why not use it? And for another, two individual 5mm plates of this size are more manageable than a single 10mm plate. I'm going to secure the first plate with a point weld. And then I'm going to drill three holes on each side to attach it to the H-beam. This time, I'm drilling through two pieces of steel, which works just as well. Now I can add a bolt to secure the plate, and then drill the remaining holes. I'm going to offset one of the holes on each side to go through the H-beam on the other side of the web, in this way widening the area of attachment. Next I'm gonna drill the same set of holes through the other 5mm steel plate. And here you can see what I mean by two thinner plates being more manageable than a single thicker plate. The 5mm plates are heavy enough and in this way I can easily handle them on my own. And so that's pretty much what the transoms are gonna look like. The next step will be to attach the outboard motors. For this I got one of these little cranes, which I plan to install here at the aft deck. First I have to find the right position so that I can lift each outboard motor right above the center of its respective transom. And because the aft deck has a slope in it, I'm gonna have to build a leveled base first. For this I'm using an app which uses my smartphone's gyroscope to determine its spatial position. For the foot of the base I'm gonna use this 80 by 80 by 8 mm L profile. So I'm gonna cut two pieces. Then trace the angle of the slope it's gonna have, cut away the excess material, and double check if everything fits together. Next I'm gonna prepare all the parts for welding. I first make a few point welds with the base on the deck, because the deck is not only sloped longitudinally, it's also arced sideways. Now these welds really need to stick, so I'm first going to make a few test welds to figure out the right settings on my welder. For some reason, no matter what settings I chose, none of the welds would resist a blow of the hammer. So out of frustration, I simply put the welder at maximum settings. And see there, this weld would actually hold. Given that I'm working with relatively thick material, I thought it couldn't hurt to use those settings for this most important part I'm building. You can see nicely how the weld ate into the material 
and firmly bonded the two parts together. Next I place a weld on the other side and I only make relatively short beads to avoid heating up too much the material as well as the nozzle of the welder. Here once again the welds are looking very good to me, so I'm quite confident that this piece can withstand the forces that are gonna be applied to it in the future. Next I'm grinding down the welds on the outside to make it look a little nicer and then it's time to drill the holes for the foot of the crane. Now that the holes are drilled and the foot can be bolted onto the base, I put a layer of rust converter on it to prevent it from rusting in the meantime of continuing the work. Because next it's time to drill some holes into the deck of the boat, so I'm gonna fix it in position temporarily with four point welds. And so while I'm at it, I'm gonna install the crane to double check if it's in the right position. So once again, the sole purpose of this crane is to allow me to install and remove the outboard motors. For this, the point of attachment to the crane needs to be exactly above the position of the outboard motors. Now that I made sure that everything is in the right place, I can go ahead and drill the holes through the base and into the deck. Now that all the holes are drilled and the base is at its final position, I'm going to prepare the area underneath for painting. For this I'm using a pneumatic needle gun as recommended by many of our viewers in the past. And I have to say, I get it. This tool is unlike any other in terms of efficiency and speed. While removing the old paint, I found what I assume to be a production number of the boat. To finish up a quick round with the angle grinder, and then I put down a layer of rust converter. Then a coat of primer. And finally, a coat of the same paint that was used for the outside of the hull. Now I can bolt everything firmly in place. and assemble the crane. I'm gonna add some grease on the bearings of the crane. Next I can add the extension arm and the pulley. I pull through the steel cable and then I'm gonna do a quick test by lifting up the larger one of my compressors. This one weighs about 70 kilos or 150 pounds. But don't get too comfortable, because we're not quite finished yet. Now we're gonna finish the transom by adding a wooden plate. 
Here I'm using a 24mm plywood plate where I've sealed the edges with epoxy resin. Next I'm drilling the holes through the wooden plate from behind. And with that, one of the transoms is now finished. Now I can unpack one of my 60 horsepower outboard motors and bring it into position. I hook it up to the crane and then I'm gonna lift it up just a little to see if everything is working. After I deemed that everything was in good working order, I unbolted the engine from its frame and put the crane into position. Now in the next shots I might seem very focused, serious even, but I'm actually just afraid that the whole thing flies into my face. I'm adding a couple of tension straps, just in case the crane would give way. At this point I realized that the engine could easily tip over, so I added another strap. Now comes the moment of truth. From here on out, there's no turning back. Will my system work the way I thought of it? Is the crane going to hold the weight of the motor? Are my wells going to withstand the forces that they're gonna be subjected to? Once completely in the air, am I going to be able to attach the motor to the transom? And is the transom going to hold the weight of the motor for that matter? And above it all, can I do it all by myself? So many questions. So many things that could go wrong. And as always, the only way to find out is to simply do it. Now the motor is completely suspended. All that's left to do is to get the mounting bracket above the upper border of the transom. To get the mounting bracket aligned with the transom, I'm gonna use a tension strap. Of course, it would be much easier if another person were to push it from behind, but for safety reasons, I don't want to have anybody stand there during this process. Now I just have to get it centered on the transom let it all the way down and mark the position for the attachment bolts and there you have it I actually managed to pull it off the anti-cavitation plate is aligned with the bottom of the boat so the height of the transom is perfect in that regard. But it's not all roses and peaches. The way it is now, I won't be able to tilt it up if I had to work on the propeller or during winter times. This means that I need to extend the transom a bit further outwards, but at this point that's just a minor inconvenience. So I'm gonna leave you with that for today. You can go ahead and watch me take this back down and I will see you in the next video.